Picking up all of those books for that thumbnail was a little bit of a workout. Hi, it is your resident wannabe children's TV presenter in this ridiculous jumper here today to talk to you about Disability Readathon, which is next month in April. It's run by Eric and Anna, who are great. I'll link their channels in the description box down below. And Disability Readathon is about centering own voices books about disability, centering disabled writers. Big fan. I am going to be running a reading sprint for the readathon in April um, and you can find out details of all of the reading sprints over on their channels and their website. If you are new to my channel, if you're following this readathon, hello, my name is Jen. I am an author and a book reviewer. I have a rare form of external dysplasia. I've made videos about it. I'll link them in the description box down below. I am confronted here with my TBR. So for Disability Readathon, there are four categories. And if you're looking for prompts, the task is to pull one prompt from each category. But I don't think I'm going to use the prompts myself. I'm just going to use this as a jumping off point to read even more books about disability than I would normally do in April. I have made several videos before recommending books with great representation of disability and disfigurement. I made one a couple of years ago and then I made one a shorter one this month for World Book Day which is on Instagram and I'll link both of those in the description box down below and I've been wanting to make another big one because I've read so many more books since that last video but I always think I'll just read a few more and then I can include even more books in that video and then time passes. So in the meantime what I want to do today is talk to you about all of the books that are on my TBR. These are not all of the books that I'm going to be reading in April, but this is the selection of books that I'm going to be pulling from. And some of these I haven't hauled yet, so this is also a mini haul. I will list them all in the description box down below in case you miss any of these titles and you would like to go and find out more. Um, and let's just dive in. Let's begin with the books that I haven't yet hauled. First up is this one, which I did mention in a reading vlog because I was opening post, but I haven't put it in a haul yet. This is a collection of speculative memoir about disruptive bodies. It's called Disturbing the Body. And the blurb says, from illness to major medical operations, childbearing to pain and chronic illness to disability, Disturbing the Body sets out to explore the many ways that women feel powerless and at odds with their own bodies. I also included this in a reading vlog. This is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. A Mind Spread Out on the Ground is the Mohawk phrase for depression. And it says, in this urgent and visceral work, Alicia Elliott explores how apt a description that is for the ongoing effects of personal, intergenerational and colonial traumas she and so many native people have experienced. This is a middle grade book. This is a book by Carrie Burnell. I have loved reading other books of hers and this is one that I haven't got to yet. It's called The Girl with the Shark's Tooth. It's about a young girl called Minnow who has grown up on a boat hearing stories about a strange enchanted ocean called the Wild Deep. Now with her mother missing and questions to be answered, Minnow must make the dangerous journey to a hidden world where fairy tales become reality and it will change Minnow forever. I think this is the uh, intersection of disability and particularly mermaid folklore because there's a lot to be discussed in that arena. I bought The Book of Goodbyes by Gillian Wise because I had read their essay in Disability Visibility and wanted to read more. They are a disability activist. I also bought this, which is by Ada Limon. It's called The Carrying. This is also a collection of poetry and the blurb says, a daughter tends to aging parents, a woman struggles with infertility, and these two lines destroyed me. What if, instead of carrying a child, I am supposed to carry grief? I think a lot of those poems center chronic pain. Um, I saw this on Mercedes' channel and it's one that I've been meaning to get to for a while. I know, I think it's even her favorite book of this year so far, which is called A Room Called Earth by Madeline Ryan. And this is an own voices autistic book about an autistic character who's going to a party. And this whole book is about their experience of going to this party, what they're thinking about before they get there, and then everything that they're thinking about while they are there. And I've heard that it is exquisite. I can't tell you how excited I am 
about this next book because I did not know that it existed and I did not know that this author was disabled and I have read their work before and loved it. You may remember me mentioning a much shorter book of theirs, which is called The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am. Um, and that book and this one is by Kirsty A. Skomsvold, who is a Norwegian writer. This is a memoir and it's translated into English by Becky L. Crook. It's called Monster Human huge it says when Kirsty was 17 years old and about to start engineering studies at college she found herself almost unable to move laid out like a relic in a nursing home she listens to an old woman dying watches her boyfriend drift away and makes compendious lists of her worries that she will have to go speed dating in a wheelchair that she will be afraid and in pain for the rest of her life she also begins to compose a novel on post-it notes that she sticks to the wall above her bed monster human is an auto-fictional tour de force a funny, sad, astoundingly energetic novel about suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, the power of writing, and 21st century literary life. I have two publications here by Ake magazine. This is their magazine. This is issue three. It centers um, work about illness and disability. And I'm really excited to read um, a magazine focusing on those things and therefore hopefully discover new authors that I haven't heard of. And likewise, they've recently published this anthology, which is called Cusp, Feminist Writings on Bodies, Myth and Magic. It's got a writing in here from Charlene Teo, from Emma Glass, from Rebecca Tomas, that rhymes and lots of other different people. I also recently bought this, which is Vagina Problems, Endometriosis, Painful Sex and Other Taboo Topics by Lara Parker. This is about vaginismus, vulvodynia, interstitial cystitis, endometriosis, and it's giving me vibes also of Pain and Prejudice, which is a more academic um, discussion of these topics. This one I think is primarily personal, so is Pain and Prejudice, but it zooms out. Um, a little bit and I again have heard amazing things about that book I forgot to pull it off my shelves but here is a, a picture of that cover um, and there is also another book coming out this summer called Ill Women which again is about women's pain misdiagnosis it's a big big issue I was very kindly sent a proof copy of Gargoyles by Harriet Mercer this is coming out on the 8th of April so very very soon it says six weeks after her 40th birthday Harriet is struck by a rare and life-threatening illness. What follows is a painful and arduous day at a Charing Cross hospital from the first day in critical care. Whenever Harriet tries to sleep, the backs of her eyes come alive with soul-sucking gargoyles. She remains awake for the entire six weeks. Such wakefulness produces its own hallucinations. The gargoyles become metaphors for her lurking demons, fear of death, her relationship with her late father, and her dream of having a family. And then finally, before we move on to ones that I've hauled previously and have been sitting on my shelves, this is The Undying, a meditation on modern illness by Anne Boyer. Anne Boyer was diagnosed um, with cancer, but the back of this says The Undying is partly a memoir of Anne Boyer's illness, diagnosed when she was 41. But she doesn't just pull the pink ribbon loose, unfastening its dainty loop. She feeds it through a shudder and lights it on fire. <laughs> like, I, I really, really like that blurb. I should say, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am an author too. I've written 10 books and two of them in particular, Centre, Disability and Disfigurement. That is a collection of short stories called The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night and a poetry collection called The Girl Aquarium. But you can find more details in the description box down below if you are interested. So these are books that I've already hauled and are sitting unread, shock horror, on my shelves. Um, some of them I've hauled uh, very very recently. Anyway, let's talk about them. So this is a collection of poetry by Hannah Hogson, who I love. She also has a booktube channel. We'll link in the description box down below. And this is called Where I'd Watch Plastic Trees Not Grow. And this is a collection of poems that um, Hannah has written specifically over the course of 2020. A quote from one of the poems on the back reads, the trees here grow medical conditions. I'm second from the left and each fruit is a crystallized diagnosis. Another poetry collection on my TBR is Lumen by Tiffany Atkinson. This one says, how might poetry help us articulate the body in illness, in work and in love? Part of this collection takes fragments of speech and found text from a hospital residency to pay homage to the inventiveness and humour of patients and staff in a series of meditations on the notion that pain resists language. 
This is a book here by Jen Ashworth, whose fiction I have read before, but not her non-fiction. This is called Notes Made While Falling. It says that it's both a genre-bending memoir and a cultural study of traumatized and sickened selves in fiction and in film. It offers a fresh, visceral, and idiosyncratic perspective on creativity, spirituality, illness, and the limits of fiction itself. This is a book that I bought a long time ago um, and as I'm losing my sight myself, it wasn't a book that I felt ready to read. Um, I, we all go through processes of when we're ready to, to tackle certain topics and this is one that I had been putting off but it, it's one that I've also been drawn to more recently as um, my sight has gotten gotten worse. So I have read um, a few books recently on sight loss, which I have wrapped up um, in, in recent reading wrap-ups, but this is one that I haven't got to yet, and it's called Seeing Red by Lena Moranier, and this is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. So this is a novel, but it is based on the author's own experience. She is a Chilean writer, and this is about a Chilean writer who moves to New York to pursue an academic career, and then one day something happens which her doctors had warned would happen, and that is that her eyes hemorrhage, so she's adjusting to a, a new way of seeing, which is... Uh, Essentially, she is she is mostly blind. She can see outlines of some things, mostly in, in greys and in red. Sanatorium by Abby Palmer is a book I've been meaning to get to for a few months now. It was shortlisted for the Barbellion Prize this year, which is a, a prize that celebrates writing about disability. The winner was Gollum Girl, which is also on my TBR. I'll talk about that in a second. But Sanatorium is a book, a debut that challenges preconceptions around chronic pain, the queer body and disability. And then this one, I I am so embarrassed not to have read yet, Lizzie. I'm really, really, really sorry. I funded this when it was being crowdsourced on Unbound a couple of years ago. Was super excited about it, and then it's just sat on my shelf, which is not okay. So I would like to read it. Uh, this is called Stim, an autistic anthology edited by Lizzie Huxley Jones, who is great and also has an excellent dog, which I would quite like to seal, but don't worry, I, I won't. The blurb says around one in a hundred people in the UK are autistic. And the saying goes, that if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. Autistic people's personalities, differences, and experiences outweigh the diagnostic criteria that link them. Yet stereotypes persist and continue to inform a fundamental misunderstanding of what it is to be autistic. So this is a series of essays by autistic people talking about their experience of autism. This is Heartberries, which is by Therese Marie Melhot, and this is very short. So again, I don't know why I haven't read it yet. And I've also heard great things about it too. It says that Heartberries is a powerful poetic memoir of a woman's coming of age on the Seabird Island Indian Reservation in the Pacific Northwest. Having survived a profoundly dysfunctional upbringing only to find herself hospitalized and facing a dual diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder and bipolar 2 disorder, Therese Marie Melhot is given a notebook and begins to write her way out of trauma. I will say that I'm aware that a lot of these books that I'm showing you on my TBR are memoir and that is what I've been drawn to most recently as someone who's seeking... I, I guess just personal experiences of different parts of disability before I'd access disability um, mainly through fiction and, and now I'm mostly drawn to memoir. So this is quite a, a, a video that's tipped definitely more towards that end of things, whereas other videos um, where I've recommended books about disability have had more of a split between fiction and uh, non-fiction and also poetry. So if you're in the mood for, for more fiction-based stuff, then you can head over to my other videos as well. Um, this is a book by Three of Cups Press, and I will also say that um, I was part of another one of their anthologies, which was called Outsiders, and my story in that was about um, disfigurement. So I will link their press in the description box down below because they are fabulous. This is another anthology of theirs called On Bodies. So whilst I don't think it's just primarily focused on disability, it does uh, contain fiction about disability. It says, bodies, we all have them, but our relationship with our own body is completely unique and specific to us, to our background, our gender, our sexuality, our race, our faith, our health, and our mind. It is an incredibly important relationship to explore. And in this collection of short stories, essays, poetry, and art, we explore the often difficult, often miraculous relationships people have with their own bodies. 
Recently I read Disability Visibility edited by Alice Wong and loved it. This I think is going to be in a very similar vein. It's called Growing Up Disabled in Australia which is edited by Carly Finley and again is a collection of essays about experiences of being disabled. I have two anthologies here that have been recommended to me. This is first coming of age stories uh, by disabled writers and this is edited by Bello Miguel Cipriani, I think, let me double check that, yes. Um, so this is stepping back in time with some of the best writers with disabilities as they recount their first adventure, their first heartbreak and the first time the unexpected treaded into their life. And then this is Chattering by Louise Stern, who is a deaf writer. So this is a collection of short stories, so this is fiction and all of the narrators in these stories are deaf. Um, this is also a graphic memoir about being deaf. It's called El Defo by C.C. Bell. I hauled this recently and was a bit perplexed by the quote on the back by another author, which says, even with a hearing aid turned off, you hear C.C.'s universal plea for acceptance, friendship and happiness through honest words and deftly drawn pictures. Um, I just thought it was a weird... Uh, word play to have on the back it was quite patronizing but i have heard really good things about the graphic memoir itself um by people who are deaf so i'm looking forward to reading that one i have been reading derek jarman recently i'm reading his book chroma which is about color which he was writing as he was losing his sight and this is his other book modern nature which is about building a garden outside his home after he was diagnosed with hiv um, and was losing his sight and was thinking about illness and disability and what that meant for him. And then I have this book here, which is called What Doesn't Kill You? A Life with Chronic Illness, Lessons from a Body in Revolt by Tessa Miller. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the, the title of that one says what it is. And then this is the winner of the Barbellion Prize that I mentioned before, which is called Gollum Girl. And this is a memoir about having spina bifida and about the interaction of disability and art, which sounds really, really wonderful. So those are quite a few books that I'm gonna be um, picking and choosing from in April. As I said, if you would like more fiction recommendations, you can head over to my um, previous recommended videos. I would love to know if you're taking part in this readathon, what your TBR is, look at the prompts, see if you would like to take part, I would love it if you did, and I'm sure that they would love it if you did as well. I hope that you're all having a good week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of love, bye.